to Ray Harris. Take it away, Ray. Oh, excuse me, before he speaks, all of these chocolates around here are to be eaten. <laughs> Imagine if you can. A 360-pound man laying in a hostile room all by himself. Imagine if you can an individual with fear in his heart. Imagine a person who is laying there and closes his eyes and hears the words. Don't do it for me. Do it for you. Don't do it for me. He realized that was the words of his wife as he was contemplating a major operation. He knew at that moment his life, his marriage, was over. Mr. Chairman, uh, uh, there you go, sir. fellow Toastmasters, honored guests. That man was me. I tell you this because I looked at where I was in my life before that. I look at where I am in my life today. And I have to ask myself, what is the one thing, the very single thing that I can give you that will allow you to never get to the lowest level of depression? Obesity, morbid obesity, depression, alcoholism all examples of things that we as a culture try to shy away from. How do we get away from an individual? How do we deal with inner pain? I'm going to give you it today. And I want you to really remember this. I hope I can burn it into your mind. It's called future focus. Future focus is the answer to all of these problems. It's simple. Richard Robbins, a great Canadian motivational speaker, said it to me. And what he said was, it's seeing life not as it is today, as we'd like to see it. We'd like it to be. The visions that we have and where we want to go are there. All we have to do is think about it. We just have to put ourselves there. Now, as a young person, I was a little bit heavier, but I had a lot of ambition. I wanted to do things. I got out of high school. I wanted to do more of my life. It wasn't like I was lazy. We think of somebody 360 pounds laying out of bed. He must have been lazy, right? We think of people in depression. They can't come out of their house. We think, oh, it must be them. It's not. It's the inability to have a future focus to see where they want to be and being stuck where they are. I went on to university, I went on to college, I made, a, I made a decision that I was going to meet a tall, blonde, Amazon woman that I wanted to marry. Why? I don't know. Well, I married someone who was 5 foot 11 in National War, an Australian. It was all there, right? I had goals, I was ambition. It's like Bill Gates says, ambition is one thing, but having a vision of what you want to create is the most powerful force in the world. But you can have a vision and still fail. What is the little of information that I could give you is future focus. You can be ambitious, but you actually have to grasp the concept that you have to live each day like you're already there. Gene, about two years ago, said he came to me a year and a half ago and after a speech contest says, you know, I want to go this, I want to go there, I want to go there. And I said to him something that I thought about the other night. And now that I said, when you go there, you have already won. You have already put yourself in the future focus. So no matter what you do, if you go into a room of a thousand people, if you say, I'm a good speaker, I can speak, you'll be able to speak. If, however, you go into that room, but you're not going to be able to do it, you won't be. It's called a self-fulfilling prophecy. Herbert, in his book, says, <laughs> says that great people create their lives. Well, many others are created by their lives. C. 
basically let life happen. They move, as many people do, from distraction to distraction, reacting to whatever life brings them without moving forward. I remember a young couple, uh, actually went to, to uh, high school with them, Bill and Linda Notes. Bill and Linda lived a challenging life with a lot of young children. And it would be really difficult to come in and see all these kids running around and everything going crazy in that room, that house. But guess what? They have a smile on their face. I know why they have a smile on their face. Today they have three grown children that have made them very, very proud. But they knew that from the day they had their children. They were not brought down. Unfortunately, I've met hundreds of people in my profession that maybe are losing their home in foreclosure. I have seen that the only way I could get them to even smile was to sometimes sit on the floor so that my head was lower than theirs. That the depression had taken over so much and they saw themselves where they were instead of where they could be. I've been told I'm really good with foreclosures. I'm really good with people like that. Why? Because I know where they came from. If you know where you are today, and you know where you want to be in the future, what do you need? Future focus. I sit down with these people and I say, look, it'll be okay. It's not totally your fault. We'll work ourselves through this. You will be in a better life. Can you see it now? Well, and my goal over the maybe the one month or two months that I'm with them, my personal goal, is to get them so they can look me in the eye. And at the end, they can say that they've established, they've done something, they've completed something. Now, I need to talk to those people. I hope that I've communicated to them the most important thing they can learn in life. Future focus. You walk down the street, and you see people walking around with huge smiles on their faces, and you know they know what they're going on. They've got a vision of what they want in life, like Bill and Linda knows. They know what they want. They have a smile on their face. You see other people that are kind of grudging along, kind of cruising along, not doing very much. Those people are moving from distraction to distraction and reacting to what life brings them. They don't have a future focus. They probably don't even have a vision of where they want to go. Now, you can't just stand here and say, well, I'm going to do it. I'm, I'm going to make this happen. You know, that's ambition. Ambition is great. I have an ambition. I'm going to get there. But what put me in that hospital bed was as I had all the ambition and I had the goals to do well, I lost sight of the horizon. I stopped flying at 50,000 feet. I stopped being the pilot of my life. Set a goal. But more importantly, see yourself in that position. If you go to work tomorrow and you want to be the president of the company, Act like it. Feel it. Empower the people around you. Tell Toastmasters, if there's one thing you get from my conversation tonight, it's have dreams, but more importantly, live 